Hey there, Kathy. Are you around? I've been trying to reach you. Hello? Can you hear me? I'm sorry for the delay. I was caught up with some work. And I thought we had agreed that you wouldn't call me that. Oh, what work could possibly keep you so busy? Let me guess. Is it gaining weight? <laughs> You're overstepping your boundaries now. Please kindly refrain yourself from saying whatever nonsense comes to your mind. Oh, come on. Don't tell me what I can or cannot say, especially when it seems like you're the one who is incapable of doing anything productive. Like getting a job, for instance. That's not true. Like I said, I'm working. What do you think I meant by that? Really? Working on what, exactly? Lying around and stuffing your face with snacks? Can you stop saying such things? It's not nice to make fun of people like that. I don't appreciate it. Well then, why don't you try being useful for a change? Maybe that will improve our relationship. But I am trying. I help you around the house whenever I can. I appreciate you making dishes for us. I even buy you presents whenever I'm out. And I put in a good word for you whenever we have guests. Don't take this the wrong way, but I think you're the one who has to fix her attitude. There you go again with your complaints. You just love being pampered and having people do things for you. But let me tell you something, sweetheart. That's not how the real world works. That's not what I meant at all. Anyway, the reason why I texted you was to ask a favor regarding my son. What is it? It's simple, really. I don't want you around him anymore. What? Why would you say something like that? You heard me, right? Stay away from my son. But that's impossible! He's my husband! Why would you want us to separate? You were supportive of our marriage. Yes, that was before I realized he chose someone like you as his wife. You two are completely different. My son is a smart and handsome young man with a bright future ahead of him. He shouldn't be seen with someone like you. That was uncalled for. Do you even realize how hurtful your words are? And let's not forget about your attitude. Honestly, I don't understand what he sees in you. All you seem to be good at is spending his money. Excuse me? Yes, you heard me right. You're always out shopping and spending money left and right. Where do you even get the money from? You don't have a job, so it must be his money that you're spending. That's not true at all. The money is mine. Really now? Do you expect me to believe that lie? You don't even have a job. It's not a lie, Amanda. I do have my own source of income. Couldn't you have found some other rich guy to leech off of? Why did it have to be my son? Let me guess. No one else wanted to spend even a penny on you, right? Connor probably felt sorry for you and decided to help out, but you took advantage of his kindness and now plan on living off his money for the rest of your life. That's not true at all. You can't just make assumptions about me like that. I'm not with him for his money. I married him because of who he is as a person. Connor is an amazing guy and an even better husband. He means everything to me and I love him dearly. Well, we'll see how long that lasts once his bank account dries up. After that, I'm sure you'll leave him in no time flat. Do us all a favor and just end things with him already. He deserves someone better than you. That's ridiculous. There's no way I'm leaving him. But as far as moving out goes, don't worry about it because Connor and I are planning on moving out next month anyway. Wait, what? Connor didn't mention anything about moving out. Are you trying to steal my son away from me? You're the bitch. Ever since I moved in here, you've tried to make my life miserable. You keep looking down on me, call me names, and mock me. This is no way to treat a human being. So I looked up and found a nice apartment we can live in. You wouldn't have to deal with me any longer. Are you happy now? I don't believe this. You really are trying to take him away from me. Mark my words, Kathy. You will regret this. I'll make you pay. Hey, Kathy, where are you? 
I've been trying to reach you. Hi, Connor. I'm currently at the library. What about you? Where are you? I'm at home right now. Really? That's unusual. You're usually not home this early. I guess I should wrap up here and head home as well. The sooner I get home, the sooner I can start preparing dinner for us. Actually, there's no need for that. Mom already prepared dinner for me. Speaking of mom, she seemed quite upset today. Did something happen between the two of you? Oh, it's nothing serious. Just the usual disagreements. It seems like your mom still hasn't fully accepted me. Hmm, mom mentioned that you were out the whole day today. Is that true? Well, I wasn't gone for that long. And besides, I only come to the library occasionally. Listen, Kathy, I've been doing some thinking and... I don't think this is working out between us. We should consider getting a divorce. You understand what I'm saying, right? What? No, I don't understand at all! Why are you suddenly asking for a divorce? Because... I don't love you anymore. What do you mean by that? Just last night you told me that I was the light of your life. That was before I found out what happened. Why? What happened? This is all so sudden. Hang on, let me get back. We'll talk about this face to face when I get home, okay? No, it's not okay. I've made up my mind and my decision is final. But why? As your wife, don't I deserve to know why you want a divorce? Because you're useless. You don't help around the house. You don't care for my mom. Hell, you don't even take care of yourself. Just look how much weight you've gained. You weren't this big when I married you. I'm trying my best to help your mother around the house and you know it. I do the dishes, clean the kitchen, vacuum the house, volunteer to go shopping when no one else wants to. And yet, I still have to listen to her complain about me all day. I'm finding it difficult to manage my time and energy with all the household work and my personal work and everything. Yeah, right. Next, you're gonna complain that I'm a bad husband. What's wrong with you? Why do you suddenly want a divorce? What's happened? You, Kathy. You happened. I can't believe you treat my mother this way. Mom told me that you called her a bitch. Is that true? She called me a bitch first. That's no excuse to disrespect your elders like that. Fine. I admit I shouldn't have said that. I was wrong. I'm sorry. I'll apologize to her personally when I come home. But don't you think it's a little extreme? Are you divorcing me over this? It really affected her. She's been so sad the whole day. What's worse is that when I ask you what happened, you said it's nothing. Are you that heartless? You're making a big deal out of nothing. The last time I talked to your mom, she seemed fine. She was her usual criticizing self. She definitely said way more hurtful things to me. It's not just that. I've been noticing the way you behave around her. You're always complaining that she dislikes you, that she calls you names, etc. I understand that my mother can be a handful at times, but all you do is to complain about it. Besides that, you're almost never home. Even now, you left to be in a library while my mother is here, all sad and alone. I can't have a selfish wife. You're supposed to take care of her when I'm not around. Selfish? Your mother has been breathing down my neck ever since we got married. She keeps insulting me and keeps arguing with me on everything. But you never take my side. You kept telling me that I shouldn't react to what she says. So, I come to the library to ease my mind. You didn't mind when I asked you to head to the library every now and then. So why is it a problem now? Because I feel you're always there. You're never home. How would you know? You're always at work. Mom told me. I see. And was it your mom who suggested you get divorced? Yes, we've been talking about it for a few days now. I don't appreciate how you talk back to her. Not to mention the tone you use with her. I've lectured you about this before, haven't I? But you just don't listen. 
If you can't change your attitude, then I don't think we can be together anymore. It's that simple. Are you even listening to me? I'm your wife! Why don't you ever hear my side of the story for a change? You always pick your mom over me. What did you expect? She's my mom. I can't say no to her. So, what she says becomes absolute? Is that it? Have you ever even seen how your mom treats me? That's enough. I won't let someone talk to my mother like that. What about me? I've been working my butt off to provide for the family. On top of that, I'm helping your mother with the housework. I tried to spend as much time with her as I possibly can. I've even tried to ignore her comments. But sometimes they really get to me, you know? At first, I was able to tolerate it because I knew I had your support. But these days, it's like you're a completely different person. Why are you acting so differently? That's not who I married. My Connor is kind and loving. He's thoughtful and fulfills all his duties as a husband and looks out for his wife. I don't understand why you're being so cruel. Cruel, huh? Just because I have been giving you your usual allowance, I'm cruel? If that's how you feel about me, then fine. Let's just get a divorce and end things here. As if I need your allowance, I make enough money on my own. What I need from you is a partner that has my back. Make enough money? Doing what? Writing articles? Yeah, right. Just because you got lucky with your freelancing career doesn't mean it'll last long. <laughs> I reckon it'll only take you a month or so to start losing clients. It's all downhill from there. After that, you'll come crawling back to me for your allowance. <laughs> okay, rude. And who are you to tell me I'll fail? A good husband should support his wife. And what is it with you and your mother looking down on me all the time? I'll have you know that my clients are very loyal to me. More than you've ever been. But as far as the divorce goes, then fine. Let's get divorced. Wait, really? I can't live in a household where all its members look down on me. If you can't treat me right, then you are in no position to call yourself a worthy husband. Uh-huh. Anyways, do you think you can move up till the end of the month? I want to start my new month fresh. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll leave. Kathy, it's an emergency! Please! I need you to lend me some money. It's urgent. I'm not helping you pay for your wedding. How did you know? I didn't say what it was for. Your mother contacted me earlier. She tried to guilt trip me into giving her money. She said it was for your wedding and that I should be happy for you. I turned her down. Look, I'm sorry that I divorced you, okay? I know you probably still have feelings for me, and I understand that. But there just wasn't a future for us, you know. Well, okay, Mr. Delusional. Are you done? I have other important matters to attend. I get that you're jealous of my fiancé. But it's okay. The least you could do is see me happy, right? This is your chance. If this is some messed up way of apologizing, then I'm afraid you're a little late. Please, just listen to me, okay? I never wanted to divorce you. Mom made me. What was I supposed to do? Oppose her? I was young and stupid. I didn't know what to do. It was all her scheming. She wanted us to be divorced so she could set me up with other rich women. Oh, please. It's bad enough you never let me tell your mother how much you really earned. Do you know how much nonsense I had to endure for you? Things like how I'm an incompetent wife and a gold digger, when the truth is that the house is only functioning under my income. I know. I didn't realize how much you were contributing. Now it is hard to manage expenses without your help. I'm sorry. I didn't know what I was thinking. But I really need your help right now. My mom didn't know my salary. She told my fiancé that I make six figures a year. Now everyone's expecting me to throw this lavish wedding, but don't have the money for it. I'm already in debt. 
Then just tell them the truth. If she chooses to still marry you, you'll be a lucky man. <laughs> Having wives who earn more than you to sustain the house. <laughs> but please don't blow it with her, too. The wedding is in two weeks. If I tell her I'm not what I introduced myself as, she won't marry me. Don't you think she'll find out sooner or later? If not now, then maybe after you guys get married. She might even file for divorce. Or sue you, for that matter. Yes, but by the time we'll already be married. Which means at the time of the divorce, I still get to keep half of the assets. You're a real scumbag. They say women are gold diggers. Clearly, they haven't met you. Please, I'll do anything. Just help me with this wedding. I'm begging you. You got yourself into this mess, so you fix it. Quit bothering me. I'm going to block your number now. Wait, please. Hello? Are you still there? Hello? After that, my career really started to take off. I was getting more and more clients who wanted me to write articles for them. I even had to hire a few more employees to keep up with all the orders. I was making more money than I ever dreamed of. I was able to buy a nice apartment in the city, a new car, and some designer clothes. I hadn't started dating anyone yet, but I planned to do it as soon enough. This time I would be looking for someone far more trustworthy and loyal than Connor could ever be. Someone who would love me for who I am and not for how much money I make or how much I weigh. As for Connor, he had to sell his house to pay for the wedding, but that still wasn't enough. He had borrowed a lot of money from his friends and relatives, but he couldn't pay them back. When his fiancée found out he wasn't as wealthy as he said he was, she dumped him immediately. Not only that, but she also sued him for fraud. She claimed that he had lied to her about his financial situation and that he had tricked her into marrying him. She demanded a huge amount of money as compensation. Now that he's homeless and in a lot of debt, both him and his mother have to work several part-time jobs to get food on the table. They have to live in a cheap motel and barely have enough to survive. It's a wonder how they'll make it through the winter, especially with the cold weather and the high heating bills. Amber, it looks like you're going to be late again, overtime. Oh, Jack. Sorry, I haven't been able to get a hold of you. Things just settled down. But it looks like today might take a little while longer. It's okay. I ordered Chinese food again tonight. <laughs> oh, I didn't get any for you, though. Just get anything you want when you come home. It's going to be a late night, so I don't think I need dinner. What? Really? You worked all day and you're not eating dinner? That's my lady boss. I guess you have to be powerful to be one. <laughs> I guess. Anyways, what's up? I thought you needed something. Oh, that's right. I mean, it's nothing important. <laughs> it's almost your birthday, isn't it? I wanted to buy you something if you wanted. Oh, my birthday's coming up. I've been so busy at work, I forgot. I thought so. <laughs> so, do you want anything special? I mean, it's your money even though I say I'll buy you something. <laughs> Um, Jack? About that... Yeah, what? Do you already know what you want? <laughs> no, it's not that. I don't need a birthday present from you. Instead... Will you start looking for a job now? What? A job? Yeah. Jack, you quit your job all of a sudden six months after we got married. You haven't worked since then, have you? You've been jobless for two years. I think it's time you start looking for a job. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> it's fine. I don't need to work. You're going to bring in a lot of money as a boss lady. <laughs> There's no need for me to work, is there? That's not the point. What if I get sick? What if I can't work? Then I only have you to depend on. No, no, you'll be fine. You've been the boss for over 10 years. You have enough savings. Even if you couldn't work, we can make it off your, your savings. You shouldn't think of it so lightly. 
You never know what's going to happen in life. You really worry too much. <laughs> It'll be fine. Let's say you do fall ill. I'll take care of you. <laughs> I'm glad, but... In any case, I'm not going to look for work. The money that you're making is enough. Okay, we're done with this topic. I feel like eating dessert now, so I'm ordering out again. Don't work too hard. Bye. Wait, Jack. I'm going to start thinking about some things. Jack, didn't you have a job interview at 10.30 today? How was it? Oh, Amber. Sorry, I was sleeping. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you mean you were sleeping? Well, I stopped my alarm and fell back asleep. <laughs> I woke up earlier and it was already 12. <laughs> it was way past my job interview. <laughs> You're joking. I contacted a company that I know and had them schedule an interview just for you. I told you that you didn't have to do that. It's because you forced me to do something like that. I don't have any intention on working. But it's not healthy for you to be rolling around at home every day. So I think it's good for you to work a little. You keep saying that, but isn't it that you want me to work so you can have it easy? Of course it's not it. Why would you say that? <laughs> yeah, I thought so. <laughs> you earn thousands of dollars every month. So it would be crazy to think that you would want me to work so that you could have it easy. <laughs> Please? It's not going to work out for us if we keep living like this. You don't have to get so dark. I just woke up. Can't we talk about things like that later? <laughs> We're almost 40. We're at that age where we have to start thinking about the future. You're the one who's turning 40. <laughs> I turned 38 on my birthday this year. <laughs> I still have two years left. <laughs> Stop playing around. I'm actually thinking about our future. I'm saying this because I want to spend as much time with you as I can. I told you, you worry too much. That's enough, okay? I don't intend to work. You make plenty of money. <laughs> but... Okay. I'm heading out for drinks with my friends. <laughs> what? Wait, it's still noon. We're going to drink all night. <laughs> I'm probably not coming home tonight. <laughs> you might be lonely all by yourself. Don't cry, okay? <laughs> Jack, wait a second. I'm not finished talking. I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> well, that's it. Have fun at work. <laughs> hey, wait. Hey, Jack. Hey, Jack. What is this? Oh, Amber. Sorry, I got hammered last night at my buddy's house. <laughs> that's not what I was asking. I'm asking what's going on. I said I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm not at home, even though it's your birthday. I'll go home after I sober up a bit. Don't get so upset. <laughs> I told you that's not it. Oh, you want me to sing? Happy birthday, dear Amber. Knock it off! I got a phone call earlier. It was from the person in charge of the condo loan screening. What? That's... Jack, did you buy a condo without telling me? You even put me down as a guarantor. Oh no, you've got to be kidding me. They contact the guarantor for these kinds of things? It's because it says you're unemployed. As the guarantor, they had to see if I was really obligated to pay. So the person in charge of the loan screening called me to check. Oh man, you found out. Well, I guess if it comes to this, there's nothing I can do. I did, in fact, buy a condo. <laughs> Please explain yourself. Why did you buy a condo without telling me? Buying with your own money is fine. You were going to have me pay as the guarantor when you couldn't, weren't you? Yeah, that's right. I bought it to live with my girlfriend from now on. 
girlfriend. Hey, what are you talking about? You're not telling me you're cheating on me, are you? Don't call it cheating, will you? My girlfriend and I are truly in love. It's more like you're the mistress. <laughs> what? Hey, are you being serious? I'm being really serious. Have you seen your own face in the mirror? Your face looks so tired from working all the time. <laughs> I don't want a wife like that. <laughs> what the heck? How can you say that? We've been a married couple all this time. Only for like three years, though. <laughs> I never married you because I loved you in the first place. <laughs> what? You said you wanted to be with me forever. Isn't that what you said when you married me? You're so dumb. <laughs> of course I married you for your money. Who would actually fall in love with an old lady like you? <laughs> That's awful. I didn't even say anything for a while after you quit your job. Didn't I hand you the money for living expenses? I even lent you money. No, duh. That's why I married you. <laughs> Listen, you've served your purpose. Hurry up and get a divorce. Got it? Hey, Amber. Did you hand in the divorce papers? Not yet. I've been so busy with work, I haven't gotten to it yet. Ugh, you're so useless. I told you many times to hand them in already. You're too busy as a boss lady to do even that. How nice that must be for you. <laughs> I'm really busy. But don't worry. I'll hand them in after work today. Huh? Really? That's good. My girlfriend and I are moving in soon. <laughs> it's disrespectful to my girlfriend if I'm not divorced by then. <laughs> okay. I'm also filing for alimony. Of course, you don't have a problem with that, do you? What? Alimony? You make as much as you do being the boss, and you're going to make me, an unemployed person, pay alimony? <laughs> this and that are different. Well, do whatever you want. I never said I would pay, though. <laughs> oh, you're going to pay. I'll do whatever it takes. My gosh, you sound scary. <laughs> well, I'm moving in with my girlfriend soon, so I'll settle things peacefully for you. <laughs> Happy 40th birthday. <laughs> I'm going to live happily ever after in the condo I bought with your money with my 19-year-old girlfriend. <laughs> after you pay me back the money I lent you. What? What do you mean the money you lent me? <laughs> I won't go far as saying the living expenses too. The money for paying with your friends, buying whatever you want, going on vacations, is all money that I lent you, right? What? What about it? Are you telling me to pay all of that back? Yeah, roughly calculated, it's about $37,000. Together with alimony, that's about $52,000. Please pay me back every penny, okay? What? Wait, wait, wait! I can't pay that kind of money after being told all of a sudden. I don't have that kind of money. How should I know? I lent it to you after you kept saying, I'll pay you back. If not when we get a divorce, when are you going to pay me back? But that's chump change to you. It's unfair to ask for that kind of money from me. That's why I told you to work. I told you. You never know what's going to happen in life. But that's... Anyways, you'll be getting more details from my lawyer soon. Look forward to it. Bye. Hey, Amber. I said wait. Amber. Hey, Amber. What the hell is this? What? I turned in the divorce papers just like you wished. The condo? I wasn't able to purchase the condo. I was supposed to move in today. What? What are you talking about? Do you have fun stating the obvious? Why? I bought the condo and put you down as the guarantor. Even if I didn't pay, your bill is supposed to go to you. 
Then why didn't the purchase go through? Why would it? I declined. What? Decline? Didn't I tell you before? The person in charge of the loan screening called me. And I told them I never signed anything. And I was put down as the guarantor without any notice. I don't intend on being the guarantor. So please, discard it. What? What the hell are you doing? I was supposed to move in with my girlfriend today. I was paying for half of her rent. And let her apartment go. Oh no, looks like you're going camping now. Have fun. Don't mess around. Why would you cancel it without telling me in the first place? You have money. Just let me buy the condo as a division of property. What? <laughs> Why should I divide any property when you cheated on me? Oh, and just to let you know, I'll be demanding compensation money from your girlfriend too. What the hell? She's only 19. I can't help but laugh at both. You can't move into the condo, and she will be demanded to pay compensation. She'll think she was caught up in all of this. Please, forgive me. I never thought it would come to this. All she wants is to be with me, too. Please don't make us suffer with the alimony. Um... Why am I the bad guy? This is all because of you, who cheated when you had a wife. And your girlfriend who cheated with a man who she knew was married. I know, but... But it's enough. I'll apologize. Do you know how much your apology is worth? What? You're unemployed, but rely on your wife's money to live however you want? How much is an apology from a piece of trash man who had an affair behind my back worth to me? <laughs> hey, Amber. Don't say things like that. <laughs> I really do think it was my bad. You feel bad and you want to apologize. If you really feel that way, there's no need to apologize. Just man up and pay the compensation money. Wait. I'll do whatever it takes to make you pay the compensation money. You better prepare yourself. I demanded compensation from the both of them and had them pay all at once. Of course, they had to go into debt and asked both of their parents to help them. I heard both of their parents cut them off after that. In the end, they kept arguing after that and broke up just like that. Now they both live a life paying off their debts, alone. <laughs>